I'm Dr. Joseph Puerto Rico, and I'm a surgeon at Hartford HealthCare. Our vision is to be most trusted for personalized, coordinated care. With the changing healthcare landscape, organizations are being tasked to rethink the way they deliver care with the goal of doing what is best for our patient to achieve the greatest outcome. Hartford HealthCare has identified care redesign as a strategic priority and has launched the Clinical Care Redesign Program. The CCR program utilizes quality outcomes to determine opportunities to improve performance, reduce clinical variation, and reduce cost of care in specific service lines. To stay at the forefront of healthcare innovation and quality, our clinical teams have been working to enhance the recovery process for surgical patients by implementing best practices and sharing strategies for patients to be in their best condition prior to arriving to the hospital. This video will help prepare you for surgery and provide the necessary tools to make you an active participant of your care. I'm Dr. Christine LaSala, a gynecologic surgeon at Hartford HealthCare. Our team is excited to share a program called Enhanced Recovery After Surgery, also known as ERAS for gynecologic surgery. We will share strategies to help you not only prepare for your surgery, but also aid in your recovery so you may return to your normal life activities faster. You are the most important member of the healthcare team. Throughout your experience, you'll meet a dynamic team that may include everyone involved in your care, from the surgeon to the anesthesia team, physicians, nurse practitioners, physician assistants, nurses, therapists, as well as office staff. We know that gynecologic surgery can be stressful on the body. You may feel some discomfort after surgery. Our team has a coordinated plan to keep you as comfortable as possible while minimizing the use of opiates and still achieve good pain control. By following a few simple steps, we are determined to provide you a safe and comfortable experience. Just like an athlete preparing for the big game, you are in training for your surgery. To minimize the loss of strength and endurance that often occurs during recovery, you want to be as strong as you can be before your surgery. The best way to do that is by walking. Walking is an easy way to increase activity. In addition, you should eat a healthy diet consisting of fruits, vegetables, and protein. This will help your body heal faster, regain strength, and fight infection. It's also important that you stay hydrated, so make sure to drink preferably six 8-ounce glasses of water per day. If you're a smoker, you should stop at least four weeks before your surgery, or at the very least cut back. To help you recover more quickly, it's also a good idea to limit any alcohol consumption before surgery. During the week prior to your surgery, please perform the following preoperative stretching exercises. For piriformis sitting stretch, Cross your leg over thigh and place your elbow over the outside of knee. Gently stretch your buttock muscles by pushing the bent knee across your body. Hold for 30 seconds and repeat on opposite side. Repeat 5 to 10 times per set. Do one set per session, one session per day. For piriformis lying down stretch, cross one leg on top of the other. Gently pull the other knee toward your chest until a stretch is felt in your buttock or hip of top leg. Hold for 30 seconds and repeat on opposite side. Repeat five times per set. Do one set per session, two sessions per day. For knee to chest stretch, place hand behind your knee. Pull the knee into your chest until a comfortable stretch is felt in the lower back and buttocks. Keep your back relaxed and hold for 30 seconds, then repeat on opposite side. Repeat five times per set. Do one set per session, two sessions per day. A good state of mind is crucial, so stay positive. The more relaxed and confident you are before your surgery, the better your chances are for an easier recovery. During your office visit, your surgeon will discuss the reasons for considering surgery, alternatives to surgical intervention, as well as potential risks and complications. 
During this visit, you may be asked to answer questions about your medical history, review your current medications, complete a physical exam, have an EKG or lab work. You'll also be asked to sign the informed consent for surgery. Confirm with your surgical provider where your incision will be made. You may be asked to purchase a foam donut or cushion for sitting more comfortably. You'll basically learn everything you need to do to prepare for your surgery. A handbook will be provided which will reinforce the information we are sharing with you today. Recovery starts at home, and there are a few simple things you can do to optimize your health before coming to the hospital. Our goal here is to get you in the best possible shape before your surgery. Fill all routine prescriptions in advance. Prepare meals that can be frozen ahead of time. Remove any objects from your home that might cause you to trip. Place things that you use often at waist height to avoid reaching movements. Make arrangements for walking pets or picking up the mail. Arrange transportation to the hospital. You'll want to stop taking vitamins, supplements, and herbal remedies three days before surgery. Also, stop taking aspirin, ibuprofen, and naproxen seven days before surgery. If you are taking prescription pain medications, let your surgical provider know so that we can have a special plan in place for your pain control during your visit. Do not use recreational drugs 10 days before your surgery. Check with your primary care provider or specialist regarding instructions for taking blood thinners and diabetes medications. Have a pair of well-fitting shoes or slippers with non-skid rubber soles. If you are the caregiver of a loved one, arrange for their care prior to coming to the hospital. Have easy access to a landline or wireless phone with emergency numbers. Plan to sit in chairs with arms after surgery. This will make it easier for you to get up. You may be asked to purchase Azo, Maximum Strength, or Uristat pain relief tablets. You'll take this on the day of surgery to turn your urine an orange color. Choose a coach 18 years or older to go with you to the hospital. The day before surgery, do not eat solid food or milk products after midnight. Drink plenty of clear fluids such as broth, water, or pulp-free juice. Brush, floss your teeth, and use mouthwash. If you have diabetes, your glucose levels may vary more than usual as you prepare for surgery. A nurse will call you the day before your surgery to tell you what time to arrive at the hospital. You'll be called if your surgery is rescheduled due to severe weather. Please bring these items with you to the hospital. Our guide, a patient's guide to getting better faster. Your ID, such as a driver's license, state ID card, or passport. Your health insurance card. A list of your daily medications, including over-the-counter and herbal supplements. Any paperwork from your surgical and health providers. A copy of your advanced directives, if any. A copy of your living will and healthcare representative form, if any. A pack of chewing gum to be chewed after surgery a book to read or something you like to do while in the hospital, feminine pads and other toiletries you may need, your eyeglasses and hearing aids with case and an extra battery, your dentures, your CPAP or BiPAP mask and settings. It's not necessary to bring the machine. If you do, it'll be checked before use. Brush, floss your teeth and use mouthwash. Take your medications as instructed by your surgical provider. Remove nail polish, makeup, jewelry, all body piercings and contact lenses. Leave your valuables at home. Don't bring credit cards, jewelry or large sums of money to the hospital. One hour before arriving at the hospital, drink 16 ounces of non-red Gatorade or other clear beverage such as apple juice or other beverage as directed. You may be asked to take two Azo Maximum Strength or Uristat tablets just before leaving home. This medication will reduce bladder discomfort and turn your urine orange to help us examine your bladder during surgery. Once you arrive, proceed to the pre-admission area where you will be weighed and your blood pressure, heart rate and temperature will be checked. The nurse will review your medical history and perform a complete skin assessment. After changing into a hospital gown, you will receive medication in the pre-op area to help decrease your pain after surgery. You'll also be seen by your surgeon and anesthesiologist to answer any of your questions. 
You'll then be moved to the operating room, where you'll be connected to monitoring equipment, compression devices on your legs to prevent blood clots, and an IV through which you will receive antibiotics. The anesthesia provider will help you to fall asleep with medicine given through your IV. Once you are asleep, a plastic breathing tube may be placed into your mouth to help you breathe during surgery. A urinary catheter may be placed in your bladder to measure the amount of urine you're making during surgery. After the surgery is complete, you will be taken to the recovery area, where specially trained nurses will care for you as you wake up from anesthesia. You will be asked to rate your pain level on a scale of 0 to 10. A combination of medications to help control your post-operative pain will enable you to get up earlier and recover more quickly. The catheter will be removed as soon as your surgical provider feels it's appropriate. It's not uncommon to have pink-tinged urine or a burning sensation with urination. This will go away in a day or so. Nursing staff will check your blood pressure, heart rate, and temperature often. While in bed, compression devices will be placed on your legs to help prevent blood clots. Coughing, sneezing, and laughter aren't as easy when you're recovering after surgery, especially if you have an incision. When you feel the urge to cough, sneeze, or laugh, try to brace the incision with your hands or a pillow, applying gentle but firm pressure. This bracing action will help support your incision and reduce tension in that area. You will likely have vaginal bleeding or discharge that will require using a feminine pad. Don't insert anything into your vagina and also avoid sexual intercourse until given the okay from your surgeon. You'll be given an incentive spirometer, a small breathing apparatus that allows you to exercise your full lung capacity and help prevent pneumonia from occurring. Use the spirometer 10 times an hour while awake. Staying active will be important for your recovery. Walking as soon as the day of surgery will help get your body back to its normal rhythm and overall make you feel better. As they say, if you don't move it, you lose it. To prevent complications such as pneumonia, blood clots, and muscle weakness after surgery, use your muscles. Maintaining your strength will be important. Following these next guidelines will minimize the amount of pressure on your incisions and avoid increasing your pain. Remember, it's important to breathe. To get out of bed using the leg roll method, roll onto your side, knees bent. Move your feet off the bed and push yourself up to sit. Sit on the side of the bed before standing. For getting into bed, sit on the bed towards the top. Sit deep into the mattress with your calves touching the bed. Lower down to your elbow and then shoulder. Then lift your legs with your knees bent. Finally, roll to your back with your knees bent. Some patients may experience nausea after surgery. If you feel queasy, please notify your nurse. After surgery, your bowel may temporarily stop working. This is called an ileus. Walking soon after surgery and decreasing the use of narcotics will often help to prevent an ileus and allow you to recover more quickly. Wound infections may occur after surgery. Washing your hands with soap and water or an alcohol-based hand sanitizer is the best way to help prevent infections. Deep venous thrombosis is a blood clot in the vein. The biggest danger is a clot that breaks off and travels to the lungs. This is called a pulmonary embolism and it can be life-threatening. You should know the signs. For a clot in the arms or legs, you may have pain, swelling, redness, warmth, or numbness and tingling. For a clot in the lungs, you may have difficulty breathing, chest pain, or a fast heart rate. To prevent blood clots, you should avoid sitting or lying in one position for long periods of time, stretch your legs and walk, wear your sequential compression devices while in the hospital, and take blood thinners such as heparin, levinox, and aspirin as prescribed by your care team. Before you leave the hospital, you will be given a copy of your home instructions, a list of medications and prescriptions that you will need, and instructions on when to follow up with your surgical provider. Before you go home, be sure to collect all of your belongings and expect to have a follow-up appointment with your surgical provider. 
At your follow-up appointment, you will discuss when you may return to driving, work, and your usual activities. Now that you're home, it's imperative that you continue to participate in your recovery by eating small, high-protein meals, staying hydrated, walking three to four times daily, and taking your medications as prescribed. After you leave the hospital, you should call your surgical provider if you have a fever higher than 101 degrees, nausea with vomiting, redness or drainage from your incision, heavy vaginal bleeding, difficulty urinating or voiding, abdominal pain that is not controlled by pain medication, leg pain, or dizziness or feeling faint while standing. If you have sudden shortness of breath or chest pain, dial 911. You may have some small plastic bandages called steri-strips across your incision. These will fall off on their own. Showers or sponge baths are permitted, but tub baths are not allowed. Please do not douche or swim after surgery. Sometimes gynecologic surgery causes swelling around the opening to the bladder, making it difficult to urinate. So you may go home with a catheter tube in your bladder. It may take up to two weeks for your bladder to return to normal. Your team will provide you with instructions on how to care for the catheter while at home. You should also make an appointment for an in-office voiding trial. Preparing and recovering from surgery is a multi-layered process, and it's vitally important that you play a part in that process. By actively participating in the Enhanced Recovery After Surgery program, you will be well prepared for your surgery and able to get back to your life much sooner. We hope this video has helped prepare you for what lies ahead in your healthcare experience. We at Hartford HealthCare hope that your experience is a positive one. Thank you for watching.